Today, we have the pleasure of having uh, Luca Spagnoli to give us a talk on quantum error correction for lattice gauge theories. So Luca is a like, graduate from University of Trento in theoretical and computational physics. His experience in quantum information started with his master's thesis work, uh, something on error correction, quantum error correction. Uh, and uh, now currently doing PhD, uh, working on algorithms uh, for quantum simulations and quantum error correction. Uh, yeah, so uh, you have the floor now, Luca. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction and also mm -hmm. for the invitation. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to start uh, with the basic idea behind uh, the paper. Um, here is the archive number if you want to mm -hmm. check out. Um, so on one hand, we have uh, quantum error correction. So it's a, a very huge field of research. Uh, but the idea behind quantum error correction is that uh, quantum computers uh, have errors. We want to correct uh, those errors, and one way to do it uh, is to define some symmetry in the system that uh, has to be conserved uh, throughout the calculation. We measure these symmetries, and if uh, somewhere they are not uh, conserved anymore, then we know that an error happened. With enough of those symmetries, we are not only able to detect the error, but also to correct, uh, because we know where it happened. On the other hand, we have uh, gauge theories, which are physical theories with a gauge symmetry. Complicated words to say uh, it is a theory with a local symmetry. So a symmetry that has, has to be conserved everywhere in space. So in every point of space, we have this symmetry. And again, if it is not conserved somewhere in, uh, in the calculation, then something happened. And here you can see the connection between the two fields. The idea behind the paper is to try to use the gauge symmetry to do error correction. So by measuring this symmetry, we should, we hope to be able to correct uh, some error. The question is uh, how many errors we can correct in this, uh, uh, with this method and what type of error we can correct. So um, this is my outline. Uh, I start with uh, a bit of uh, background in quantum error correction and uh, in that sketch theories. And then uh, I will explain uh, uh, the main point of the paper, which is uh, uh, how to use uh, the gauge theories uh, as error correcting system. Finally, if I have time, uh, I will explain uh, a bit of uh, uh, in the side of quantum simulation how one could use uh, our system to actually simulate uh, the Hamiltonian of the gauge theory. So starting from quantum error correction, uh, basic ideas, uh, classical computers uh, have uh, a bit uh, as unit of information that can be either zero or one. And the possible errors that can happen on a bit uh, is uh, the bit flip error that turns the bit uh, uh, to the other state. So if the bit is zero, it turns into one and vice versa. How can we correct this error? The, again, very basic idea is to use redundancy. So instead of doing the calculation with a single bit, we encode the logical bit, the zero L uh, here, as uh, three copies of the same state. In this case, uh, the logical zero as uh, three copies of the zero state so that we do the calculation and at the end we measure the state and if we measure let's say 0 1 0 because one bit flip error happened then we know how to correct those st that state and we know that it was supposed to be 0 0 0 of course here the assumption that only one error happens at a time and this will be the assumption for the whole presentation on quantum, instead, uh, we have the qubit that can be in an arbitrary superposition between 0 and 1. And this time, uh, we have uh, two possible errors. The bit flip, uh, which is the quantum analog uh, of the bit flip we just saw, so that turns uh, the zero state uh, to the one state and vice versa. 
But also we have the phase flip, which, is, which has uh, no classical analog, and it introduces uh, a relative phases between uh, uh, the two different states. Now, in quantum, uh, in quantum in general, quantum mechanics, uh, we like uh, operators. So to define errors in terms of operators, uh, we pick uh, the zero and one states uh, as the eigenstates uh, of the Z polymetrics that we, are, we uh, I just wrote Z to uh, meaning sigma Z, the Z polymetrics. Um, and you can see that uh, Z applied to zero, the first uh, eigenstate, gives uh, plus one, which is the first eigenvalue, and Z applied to one gives uh, minus one, and it is exactly the action of a phase flip error. So we can model the phase flip uh, as the action of uh, a Z operator. Same happens with the X operator on the same basis. Um, the X polymetrics uh, acts uh, as bit flip errors because it cycles through the possible states uh, uh, 0 and 1. Now, again, in quantum as in classical, we can uh, try to correct uh, those errors uh, by adding redundancy. However, since we have two different types of errors, uh, we need more redundancy than in classical case. And uh, uh, one way of thinking about this is uh, uh, by layers. First, uh, we encode this uh, logical zero with uh, three qubits uh, in this superposition, which is sensible to relative phases between zero and one. So this first layer of error correction that takes uh, three physical qubits uh, into one logical qubit corrects uh, phase flip errors, Z errors. Then we can use three copies of this logical state to encode a, let's say, double logical state that corrects a bit flip. And so in this case, every single logical qubit in quantum requires nine physical qubits. Now, it's not the most efficient thing that exists, but it's an example and gives the idea. Now, I'd like to do a slightly more concrete example by um, building uh, an error correcting code step by step that corrects uh, bit flips. So for the time being, let's forget about phase flip error. We want only to correct uh, X error, which are bit flip error. And we start uh, defining uh, the logical states. So the logical zero and the logical one as uh, three copies uh, of uh, three different qubits. This is an arbitrary choice. We assign the logical zero being zero, 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 and logical one being one, one, one. We could do the inverse, it doesn't matter. And we call these logical states uh, the cop words, which are the set of states protected against the bit flip by our code. Now, on this state, let's look at the action of this ZZ operator. Uh, so, for example, let's forget about the third qubit. Uh, let's look only at the first two qubits. What happens if I apply or if we measure this uh, Z tensor Z operator? So the first Z acts uh, on the first qubit, the second on the second qubit. And we know and we can see that uh, if the two qubits uh, are in the same state, uh, the eigenvalue of Z tensor Z will be plus one because the first z gives plus times plus or minus times minus, which is plus one again. Instead, if the two qubits are in a different state, plus times minus gives minus one eigenvalue. So somehow this z operator measures the parity between the two qubits, but doesn't measure the state of the qubits, meaning that if I measure zz and I get plus one, I know that the two qubits are in the same state. I don't know if they are in 0, 0 or in 1, 1. And this is particularly useful because uh, uh, this allows us to measure this operator, but uh, uh, without making the wave function collapse. Because uh, if we measure ZZ on 
okay, this state, but could be an arbitrary superposition of 0, 0, and 1, 1, we will always get plus one eigenvalue times the same state without making it collapse. The same happens if we take this state and we apply a bit flip error, say on the second qubit, that we turn this qubit from zero to one and from one to zero. We measure Z Z and we get minus one again value again, but this state is preserved. This is a, a problem going from classical to quantum that uh, to correct an error, we cannot uh, directly measure the state, but I just show you that one can measure some operators and the analogy is still there. So we can measure, uh, we can define the stabilizers operator that stabilize my our code word. Here we define two stabilizers operator, Z1, Z2, and Z2, Z3. So the index here is the uh, index of the qubit, uh, the Z axon. And if we measure these two stabilizers, and they both give plus one. This means that the three qubits are in the same state. So it doesn't matter if my wave function of my system is in, in uh, an arbitrary superposition of the logical zero and the logical one. But if I measure as one and as two and I get plus plus, I know that no errors happened. If instead, say I measure uh, the first one and I get minus one, then I know that the first two qubits were different, while the second and the third are equal. So I'm looking at states like one, zero, zero, or zero, one, one. So I know that one error happened in the first place, in the first qubit. The same happens uh, uh, with the, uh, the other possible measurement outcomes. Um, but the important point is that I defined two operators, two stabilizers, and by measuring them, I'm able to not only detect the error, but also correct it, because I know the position where it happened. And these two stabilizers plays the role of the symmetries that uh, I told you uh, in the introduction. We defined, uh, artificially defined, some symmetries in our system, two in this case, that have to be conserved throughout the calculation because their eigenvalue has not changed. And if we measure them and uh, they are not conserved, then we know the error happened. The last thing we need is a way to manipulate these two logical states. And we can do it through the logical operations. So on physical qubits, single physical qubits, we have the polymetries that before I associated with the possible errors that can happen on a qubit. But anyway, they are operators acting on a qubit and performing some operation. Now, it's very useful to define the, um, not the same operator, but uh, some operators with the same action on the logical qubit, so on the logical state. And in our case, uh, the logical X operation that brings uh, the logical zero to the logical one is uh, this weight three X operator that you can see it flips uh, all the three zeros in the state to three ones and vice versa. And the same happens with the logical Z that adds a minus one phase only on the logical one. So here we define the logical operations and altogether, this is an error correcting code. So we define a set of logical states that we want to protect. We define a set of stabilizers, which are the symmetries of the system that protects our code words. And then we define the logical operations that helps us to manipulate those logical uh, states. Um, here I conclude my introduction to quantum error correction. So if you have questions, uh, please ask.
Yeah, a quick question. So why why is given so logical y is given by by z times z times x or i z times x? Um I mean the logical y you can think of uh, just multiplying these operators. So it's uh, y y y. Okay. Thanks. Um yeah, I'm not really speaking about uh, y not uh, both in errors and operations because uh, you can get the y a part of a global phase uh, from uh, x times z. So you can think of it as uh, I, having yeah. and you have a y error or same thing. OK, thanks. OK. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, so you talked about the logical operations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but Okay, here in this case, if there's only one error, you can detect and correct it. Yes. So wouldn't you also need to specify what are the operations for correcting the errors? Is that not part of describing the code? Um, okay. I mean, of course, in this case, it's easy, right? But I, I'm just wondering whether, like, in a general case, would one describe the code by having the stabilizers, the logical operations, and then sort of like how to correct errors if you can actually detect them? Yes, um, I would say that this is uh, uh, a part of the, um, let's say, classical study behind uh, the error correction, error mm -hmm. correcting code, meaning that, okay, I define the code by giving uh, um, in, in reality, it's enough uh, specifying the stabilizers, mm -hmm. right? You get uh, a, uh, the stabilizer group, the set of these operators, and you define the code words as uh, plus one again values of these operators. Mm -hmm. Then by measuring uh, all the operators, uh, in this case, uh, I only have two operators to measure. In general, I can have um, a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, the assumption is that uh, OK, I, I'm assuming that only one error happens. So with these measurements, uh, the outcome unif um, uh, I mean, um, there is no ambiguity. This uh, okay, okay. Yeah. outcome. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I suspect that this is the case. I mean, the in some sense, like if you're using stabilizer formalism, once you specify stabilizers, then yeah, as you say, it's not ambiguous. So anything yeah, exactly. else that you didn't mention are implied already by by what you have described. So exactly. Yeah, so yeah. in this case, uh, I can uh, here I wrote the position where the error happened. Mm -hmm. I could have written uh, x on the first qubit because it's the inverse transformation of. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. In yeah. general. Um, this problem of uh, associating uh, to a measurement uh, in error is uh, uh, the problem of decoders. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. study a decoder, so-called. Um, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's uh, proven to be an uh, NPR problem. Yeah, I imagine it's okay. hard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in, in mm -hmm. general, you can assume uh, that uh, it's unique. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing it, I'm doing mm -hmm. it. In general, to make things faster, you do neural network stuff and so on to uh, mm -hmm. associate the error to the uh, error syndrome, so the outcome. Could be non-unique, uh, and so you go for probabilities uh, the most likely to happen. Uh, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understand, okay, thank you. Nothing. Mm. Other questions? OK. I think we're fine, yeah. So um, I'll move to lattice gauge theories now, uh, doing a very brief introduction here, just to say what I need to explain uh, what comes uh, next. So um, lattice gauge theories. Um, we can analyze the, the name. Uh, theories, okay, they're physical theories. Lattice means that uh, the time remains continuous, but the space uh, is uh, discretized. So we live uh, in a lattice. 
Uh, in the picture, you see a one dimensional system where you have uh, three sides, uh, the blue circles, which are the discrete points uh, where the matter lives. And then you have uh, the links, uh, the brown lines uh, that connect uh, sides. On links, uh, as I said, uh, leaves uh, the matter, while on links uh, leaves the gauge field. Uh, again, from the name gauge theories, because we have the gauge field uh, that brings uh, the gauge symmetry. Now, a lot of complicated words. Uh, let's look at an example. Uh, we can take, uh, for example, the electromagnetic theory. So the gauge field will be the electric field and the masses uh, will be the charges of the theory that can be either positive or negative and leaves on sites. Now to simplify further, we can say that uh, uh, all positive charges leaves uh, on uh, even sites and all uh, negative charges leaves on odd sites so that uh, we identify the sign of the charge by looking at the position of the site and so the site can have only two possible states, either empty or full. If it is full, again, the charge of the, uh, the sign of the charge will be determined by its index. Then the electric field to be represented and simulated on a quantum computer, we need to discretize it also. And the uh, most, uh, uh, simple discretization is to say, okay, the electric field can have only two possible values, zero, which means no electric field, or one. And so again, every link can have only two possible values. In this framework, which is of course is an approximation because uh, in the uh, non-approximated theory, the electric field is continuous, so it has uh, infinite values. Um, in this uh, framework, uh, we have both sites and links uh, um, that have uh, only two possible states. Uh, and uh, this means uh, that we cannot associate every site and every link uh, to a single qubit to be simulated. Then we have the gauge symmetry that, in our example, is nothing but the Gauss law. So uh, the Gauss law says that uh, the electric field incoming has to be equal to the electric field outgoing if uh, in the middle there is no charge, or on the contrary, if there is charge in between, the ingoing and outgoing electric field has to be different according to the charge. Now, I said at the beginning that um, the uh, local symmetry has to be satisfied in every point of space. Here, since the space uh, is discrete, the gauge symmetry or the Gauss law has to be satisfied on every side. And uh, again, since we, we like to work with operators, how can we um, uh, rephrase in terms of operators uh, this symmetry? In terms of the set operators, uh, it is very easy. Uh, here I'm representing psi uh, uh, to be the wave function of the entire lattice. And I'm saying, uh, if the site is empty, then I know that the site, the qubit representing the site, is in the state zero. So if I measure the operator z on that site, I get plus one eigenvalue. In the same way, the, if the site is, is, is uh, empty, the two links uh, before and after has to be the same, has to have the same value. How can I measure this uh, in terms of operator? I showed you before the action of this uh, ZZ operator that measures the parity between two qubits. I measure this ZZ operator on uh, the link before and after, and I get plus one again value. This uh, set of two conditions makes the Gauss law satisfied. In uh, the other case, uh, where the site is full, 
means that the site is the one state. And if I apply the zero operator on that site, I get minus one again value. In the same way, the two links has to be different. I measure ZZ operator and I get minus one again value. So again, this set is also, uh, means also that the Gauss law is satisfied. We can combine them and define a single operator that I call the Gauss law operator, which is nothing but the product of these operators. And if the Gauss law is satisfied, no matter what is the wave function of a system, it will give plus one again value when measured on a system with no errors. So in a system where the Gauss law is satisfied. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, can, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Z, S, Z sub S sub L is the, is the sigma Z operator acting uh, on site, on site SL. So uh, what's and what's Z sub L, Z sub big L sub small yeah, L? Uh, sorry, I didn't explain the notation. Here I'm saying, okay, Z is the operator, as you said. Uh -huh. Then SL is the health site. LL uh -huh. is the health link. Because I'm uh, uh, labeling stuff with uh, site L, link L, site L plus one, link L plus one. And so on. Okay, so, so I have, I have, so so you have spins on the sites on on the sites SL SL plus one, um, and do you have spins on the links? So I yeah. don't understand what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's do a brief recap. Um, the site can have two possible values. Right. So I represent it in a quantum computer as a single qubit. The link has two possible values as well. So I represent it as a single qubit as well. So oh, in this okay, system, I, I would have three qubits, one per site, and four qubits, one per link. Oh, this okay. ZSL is a Z operator acting on the qubit representing this site L. These two operators are two operators acting on the two qubits representing one, the link, L minus one, one the link L. And okay, in general, you. these yeah, no problem. And I in see. general, this uh, operator is a weight three operator because it acts on uh, three qubits, the link before the site, and the link after. Okay, thanks. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um okay, and here uh, I said it was a brief introduction. My introduction to lattice gauge theory is, is finished. Um, so again, if you have questions, no more questions. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I mean, I mean, in some ways you already explained it, uh, mm -hmm. but of course, like so, whenever I see this psi for this yeah. lattice and sites, then then I can just at least maybe in your example, I can just think of qubits for every site and for every link. Yeah. So th in in this example, it would be like a seven qubit state, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. It doesn't have to have a to be a product state. Could be entangled uh, somehow, but yeah, in general, it's a seven qubit state here. In general, if you have uh, n sides, uh, it will be a two n qubit system because you have uh, n sides and n links uh, in a one dimension. Can okay. I have a question? Mm -hmm. Is there any Hamiltonian describing this data gauge theories? Yes. Um, I have it in the backup slide. <clears throat> I don't really want to uh, go in detail in the Hamiltonian. Um, okay, uh, I suppose I can show you. Um, okay, this is the Hamiltonian. Okay. Um, it's... Uh, um, Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, second quantization, but let's say you have the psi and psi cross, which is uh, the fermionic operator, and uh, the Q and P operators, which are the uh, field operator. Psi acts on sites, and uh, Q and uh, P acts on links, 
where the field lives. So these are all fermion or are there any boson or? Um, well, the matter is a fermionic. Yes. Um, you can think of uh, electrons. Uh, the uh, electric field, uh, you can think of uh, the electric field uh, as uh, bosons. So the link so is a boson and the size is a fermion. Am I right? Yes. Um, yes, it's right, it's true. Here in uh, the system I described before, you don't really see it because you have only uh, two possible states, zero and one. So okay. you will never have the state two with the two bosons on a link. Yeah, but but the uh, link you hey, you label the link only uh, in only in two states, but the link is a boson, so I find it a little bit weird. Uh, yeah, it's uh, as I said, it's an approximation because uh, we want uh, things okay, okay, see, to be simulated. In okay. general, in the real theory, links uh, can have uh, continuous values from zero to infinity. So you need many, many qubits, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, I see. And so you can uh, truncate it uh, from zero to n. For simplicity, we choose n equal to one. Okay, thanks. And yeah, I'm already here. I just show you that. Uh, okay, uh, this is the Hamiltonian. It's uh, complicated. You don't need to understand. The point is that uh, given this Hamiltonian, which is an example, you can do it with every Hamiltonian you want uh, on a lattice. Um, you can uh, write every single piece, every psi, q, and p, in terms of polymatrices, because uh, they are a basis uh, of operators, so you can always do it. So that you can write the Hamiltonian in terms of polymatrices acting, acting on uh, links uh, or sites. Okay. And these uh, can be simulated, okay, because you have an Hamiltonian, which is an operator in terms of polymatrices. You want to simulate uh, its exponential, you decompose it and you do it. Okay. So here I introduced uh, the idea behind lattice gauge theories, so it is uh, symmetry. And again, uh, the connection is uh, easy, right? This uh, symmetry will be our stabilizer or our set of stabilizers, uh, if I consider one of these operators for every site. And so we can link uh, the quantum correction field to the uh, high energy physics uh, uh, lattice gate theories field. So we have the Gauss law with this property, and we said that uh, applied to a state with no errors, it will always give uh, plus one again value. What happens if I apply it to a state that had an error? So let's say that a bit flip error that we model, I said at the beginning, with an X on that qubit, so on the qubit with a site, of a site. Um, we apply this GL to a state where we applied this X. Um, now, X and Z uh, anti-commutes, so I can exchange these two operators and I get a minus one sign and minus sign. GL applied to psi gives psi. And so I get this result. What does it mean? It means that the error state, so the state of the system where an error happened, is still an eigenvalue, an eigen state of GL, of the Gauss law. But now, instead of having plus one eigenvalue, it has a minus one eigenvalue. So again, I can measure the Gauss law that I'd like to be conserved throughout the calculation. At some point, I measure minus one, and I know that an error happened. Now, for this equation to be true, the x has to, uh, has to act on one qubit uh, where also the Gauss law acts on, so one of these three qubits. 
And for example, uh, uh, let's say that the X error happened here, right? This is exactly this calculation. So I measure GL and I get minus one sign, but uh, I measure the Oslo before and after and I get plus one because uh, uh, they commute with this error. On the other hand, if the error happened on the link, then this error anti-commutes both with the Gauss law before, but also with the Gauss after. So if I measure these three Gauss law, I get plus, minus, minus. Of course, the same is symmetric. If the error happened on the link before, I would get minus, minus, plus. Okay. So again, I have uh, this... Uh, uh, table uh, of the error syndrome, so-called, so the uh, outcomes of the measurement of the stabilizer operators. And um, if all the Gauss law give a plus, then no error happen because the Gauss is conserved everywhere in the system. If uh, at least one Gauss law gives minus, then I know that at least one error happened and with the assumption that only one error happened, I know also where it happened. Uh, measuring the Gauss law on these three sides, I'm able to correct uh, errors uh, um, on the three middle qubits, so the middle side, uh, the link before and the link after. If I want to extend the correction to the site uh, after, so site and link uh, uh, after it, I will need to measure the Gauss law uh, again after, right? So L plus two. Um, but if you think of uh, a one dimensional system with a periodic boundary condition, if uh, I measure all the Gauss law, so if I have N sides, I measure N Gauss law, I'm able to correct uh, every single qubit XR. Now, I mentioned uh, uh, X error, okay, so in uh, this calculation, the error to be able to uh, detect it, uh, the error has to anti-commute uh, with the Gauss law. So here I prove to you that uh, we can correct every single qubit X error in the system, but uh, we cannot uh, detect uh, um, Z errors. We cannot detect them because they commute with the Gauss law. So if uh, a Z error happens here, nothing changes in the measurement of the Gauss law. And so to make uh, a full quantum error correcting code, uh, so that corrects uh, um, one arbitrary single qubit error, uh, we need to do more layers of redundancy, right? Like in the example at the beginning, we can uh, associate to every qubit to, sorry, to every side and to every link, three qubits instead of one. We define two symmetries between these three qubits so that only two logical states survive between the uh, eight possible states of three qubits. Only two logical states, we say they are uh, without error. And we use those two logical states as the logical zero, the logical one, to associate to every site and every link. So our logical qubit for every site and every link. Then we use those logical qubits to uh, measure the Gauss law and correct uh, bit flip errors. So in this way, we have to add a bit of redundancy, but you can see the advantage uh, with uh, uh, compared to not using the Gauss law, right? Uh, at the beginning, I said you how we can encode a single logical qubit with nine physical qubits. Here, by using the Gauss law, I'm associating to every logical qubit that I want in the system only three qubits, which is the layer below. Then the second layer uh, is just the Gauss law, and it doesn't need any redundancy in the system. Okay, so this is the main point uh, of the paper. We can use the symmetry of the system as uh, a whole layer of uh, error correction. 
Um, do you have an example for how to correct Z errors? Um, okay, the, the easier thing, the easiest thing is uh, um, to change basis. If uh, um, we said, um, where was it? In this example, <coughs> Q measure ZZ on the zero, 00, which is uh, a state in the Z basis, it gives you the parity of two qubits. Now think about, uh, um, think of uh, uh, applying everywhere and Adamard. You go in the plus plus state, so in the um, eigen basis of the X operator, you measure XX and the eigenvalues doesn't change. So if uh, um, you're familiar with the uh, X basis, uh, the plus state and so on. No, 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 no. But but I want to do error correction for both Z and for both spin, uh, for both uh, uh, yeah. phase and bit flip. So I want to do both. This, how do is, you, how do you... this is an example. Um, not for, for, for phase flip, yes. For, uh, for bit this, well. Yeah, this is an example. You encode the logical state as three qubits in this superposition. This superposition is sensible to relative phases between zero and one. Okay. You, um, to measure the stabilizer of this state uh, will be XX uh, on the first two qubits and XX on the second and third qubit. And with this state, uh, you correct uh, single qubit uh, Z errors. Then you take three copies of this qubit, which means nine physical qubits, in this data, and this correct bit flip errors. I'm explaining myself. I think it's easy if you can write it out. Um, um, uh, I don't know how to write. Um, Uh, I guess you're not using like a tablet or something, right? No, yeah. No, no, yeah. Um, here I have uh, an example for our uh, system of the full encoding. Okay, let, let's try to explain it like this. Um, I'm also sitting uh, for the Gauss law, with the Gauss law, I can correct every single qubit uh, uh, X error with no redundancy in the system uh, link site, link site. So now to correct Z errors also, we keep the Gauss law as it is. It corrects uh, X errors. But instead of associating uh, only a, um, a single physical qubit uh, on this side, for example, we associate uh, two states, which are not uh, the zero and one of a qubit. They are two logical states uh, that we define arbitrarily. And we define it, uh, we define these two logical states uh, as uh, two states uh, of a three qubit system. So here the black dots uh, are the three qubits uh, associated uh, to this uh, site. Here you have three qubits associated to this link, uh, three qubits associated to this link, and so on. The stabilizers for these uh, states uh, are these two. And uh, uh, here I, I try to draw uh, as clear as possible, but I know it's a mess. Huh? Um, these two stabilizers are represented by the green uh, circles here, meaning that I measure the parity between these two qubits and the parity between these two qubits. Okay, here in the three qubit state of the site, and I repeat it for all the links, all the site, all the link, all the site. In this way, I correct uh, on this uh, set of qubits uh, every possible single qubit Z error because Z anti-commutes with those two stabilizers. On this system, yeah, but, I have... oh. but after, but if you apply your stabilizer, your X1, X2, you flip your, 
you flip your 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 zero logical qubit and your one you you flip your zero logical qubit to you know one one zero plus zero zero one or something so you have to so you 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 i i so you 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 apply your stabilizer yeah, you measure right, and then you apply you have to apply and you have to measure you have to you have to apply your stabilizer again a second time no sorry uh here uh i suppose i did it wrong um yeah you're totally right if i apply this as one this is not an eigenstate of s1 um right so, so yeah i, I <laughs> wrote the wrong states uh the um the eigenvalues of uh, uh x are uh, uh, zero plus one and zero minus one. Obviously, right? Yeah, right? Because uh, x plus one, uh, it flips, uh, but nothing changes. Zero minus one, you get a minus one phase. Right. right. So, 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 but these uh -huh. uh, these uh, logical states uh, uh, here are the wrong states. Uh, uh, should be uh, plus 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 and uh, minus minus minus. So but, that. Uh, XX, okay. uh, it's but then you can only, but then you can only, but okay, if you, if you, if you change everything to the X basis, then you can only correct for, for, for Z errors. You cannot, yeah, you cannot, you cannot, you can, uh, you can, you can only, uh, you, can only uh, you can only correct for X errors. You cannot, you cannot uh, correct for Z uh, errors anymore. So, so I, how, layer, how do you correct for? Uh, at this layer, you're right. Meaning that, uh, uh yeah. Okay, these are wrong states, huh? I repeat it. Uh, but with okay, the right state, right. with these two yeah. stabilizers, you can correct a single qubit Z errors. Yeah. Then okay. this code with these code words, these stabilizers have these logical operations. Okay. Probably now I changed the, the uh, logical operation, also the logical, uh, sorry, I changed the code words. So probably also the logical operation will be different. But the point is that I have some set of logical operations. And the logical operations act as uh, uh, polymetrics on the logical state. So my Gauss law, which was uh, ZZZ, Z, Z, will be now logical Z, logical Z, logical Z. Indeed, uh, you can see by the orange box uh, is the Gauss law measurement. Because okay. this logical Z is uh, X1 and X3. So the Gauss law will be a weight nine um, uh, Z operator because here I did it wrong. Yeah, it's only confusing this slide, sorry. Um, but the point is that I do one layer of error correction where I define some stabilizers, some code words, and some logical operations. On the next level, using logical operations, I can change basis of the two logical operations I uh, define. Meaning that if I define the logical zero and logical one on the first layer, where I correct uh, with these stabilizers, the logical state on the site could be zero plus one. So the sum of these two logical operations, of the two code words. Oh, okay, I understand, I, I see, I see, I understand what you mean. So you're and using, so you use, you use th three, Three of these are uh, uh, first layer logical qubits to construct the error correction for the second layer where you do exactly. your. Uh, oh, I it okay. Um, so you need a total of nine qubits, and uh, you need a total of nine qubits for a single, uh, for a single error corrected logical qubit. In general, yes. In our system, since the second layer is given by the Gauss law, I don't need to add the second layer of redundancy. But in general, yes. Okay, I I I think that makes sense. It's easier if we can actually write it out. So um, uh, okay. I have nothing to write it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I mean, I want to help to clarify. So I I think my understanding is okay. So. What you've just shown before is you use the Gauss operators and you've shown that this can correct the X errors, right? The bit yes. flips. 
right? But it doesn't correct the Z errors. So the way to fix that is when we think of the qubits at the level of the sites and the links, we sort of already encode that with something that can correct the Z errors, which is of course the code words that you're trying to do here. So unlike the short code where you would have to concatenate this bit flip and uh, face flip, so that's well, that's why you needed nine qubits in that case. Here you only needed three because the Gauss operators already take care of the bit flips. So you only needed the three in order to take care of the face flips. Is that correct understanding? Oh, completely correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the way I think of it uh, is uh, that uh, a qubit uh, is nothing but uh, two states, a two state system. So it doesn't matter what are those states. If I add these three qubits, I'm saying that this site is a qubit already protected against face flip errors. No matter how, no matter how many qubits it is, no matter the stabilizers, I'm just defining two logical states that define a qubit. And those two states are already protected against one of the two errors. The other error is corrected by using the Gauss law. Is it somehow clear now? I mean, I think I'm fine. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh... It's okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, of course, I think like for some people, it might help to have the details more explicitly. Yeah, but it's fine. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't know like how much of the details is fleshed out in the paper. Um, um, not maybe much. not. <laughs> not not really this example, right? Okay. Yeah, but uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I have references. Uh, plenty of people have done this. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, just to try to stress uh, the thing is that in this uh, two layer of redundancy, I get the logical state uh, as a, a nine qubit uh, system because I have three qubits here, three qubits here, three qubits here. And, uh, but every one of these state is this proposition and it is already corrected against the uh, face flip errors. Then I use them as in the classical case, right? Where I encode the logical zero as three copies of a bit. The same I'm doing here, where this bit doesn't know the face flip error because it's already corrected in a second layer. What I'm doing with the Gauss law is uh, skipping this step. I'm just uh, defining logical qubits uh, that correct phase flip patterns. And once I have them, I don't need to do the second layer of redundancy. I don't need uh, this second encoding because I have the Gauss law that corrects bit flip already. Mm, anyway, uh, uh, I have, uh, I'm thinking about some references, but if you look for a uh, short code, uh, it's the easiest example, um, which is a nine qubit uh, code uh, that encodes a logical state, uh, and it explains how uh, you can correct both errors. Um, okay, um, you tell me, uh, uh, I should have like five minutes left, uh, we can have some discussion or I can, uh, uh, try to flesh uh, how to use our code to do time evolution. Um, what do you prefer? What does discussion mean? <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have questions or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I guess like maybe depending on 
other people if they want further discussion. But but if not, I yeah, I, I think like maybe you can just finish the the part about the time evolution. Okay. Yeah, um, you only need five minutes. Is that is that enough? Um yeah, I'll try. Should, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, this, uh, if you're not familiar with time evolution, uh, it's, uh, I think, more complicated uh, to understand, uh, but I'll try. Um, so you have the Hamiltonian, uh, which is uh, the Hamiltonian I showed you before, in terms of polymetrices, and you can always decompose it uh, on some operator basis uh, that I call here HJ, and for simplicity, let's assume those HJ to be polymetrices again. So I'm decomposing the Hamiltonian as a sum of polymetrices. And the time evolution, uh, to apply the time evolution, I have to apply this uh, uh, e to the i ht, this operator, this exponential. In general, it's very hard to apply it, to uh, even just write it. So one, uh, what one can do is to approximate it by implementing instead of the sum, the exponential of the sum, we can implement the product of the exponential, paying an error which scales as the commutators of this uh, uh, hj. Okay, if those hj were all commuting with each other, we would have no error. Otherwise, we have some error. But the point is that, uh, okay, we need a way to implement uh, this uh, single exponential now, this uh, e to the i tcj times power matrix. How can I do it? Um, since hj uh, is uh, a power matrix, we have this equality that uh, holds. Uh, if you want, again, the backup side, I have the calculation, but um, comes from the fact that uh, the power matrix squared. Uh, is uh, the identity, so all the even powers goes away. And uh, once uh, we have this, uh, uh, this sum, we can implement it by using uh, an ancilla qubit. So on the system, it's easy to apply uh, logical operations, which are equivalent of polymetrices on logical states, but it's hard to do arbitrary rotations because uh, once you have a system which is error corrected and you want to do an arbitrary rotation, how the system knows if the rotation is wanted or not, or is an error. Uh, so the arbitrary rotation, we can do it on an ancillary qubit and then apply this circuit. Again, I don't want to go in details also because I don't have time, but uh, uh, you can understand by intuition why he should work, right? You have one qubit here in this superposition. Here you have uh, the system, so all the qubits for all the links, all the sides. And you apply hj on the system only if uh, the ancilla qubit is one, right? So you understand why it could work. Then you have uh, the decoding part, which is uh, requires a bit of calculations, but uh, you can do it. And uh, in this way, we can move the problem from implementing this uh, uh, hard exponential to the problem of preparing the ancilla in this superposition, which is again hard to do it for tolerant, but uh, can be done. And it is a much easier problem than in applying uh, an arbitrary rotation on our system. And so then I can apply just uh, in series many of these circuits uh, to apply all these uh, exponential and implement uh, uh, the approximation of uh, e to the IHT, the time evolution operator. Finish. Uh, I have this slide of conclusions uh, and finish. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh... Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think like I actually learned quite a bit uh, of this. I think at least like the lattice gauge part, uh, this is unfamiliar to me. And yeah, I think, okay, I really liked like this Gauss operator being sort of like, 
at least in your simple example, it takes care of the bit flip errors. But I don't know like if there's other things you could actually do with it, or is that essentially sort of the main uh, main thing in the paper? Uh, there's probably more things you talk in about. In the paper, then uh, um, we use uh, the thing that, uh, okay, adding stabilizers to the, uh, to the system reduces number of code words because you are adding symmetries mm. so uh in the same th in the same way uh instead of having uh, all possible states of site and link uh, adding the gauss law you remove uh, all the uh states that doesn't conserve uh, the gauss law and so oh. how you're reducing the degrees of freedom of the system mm. and so this is the independent of quantum computing uh, is just a way of uh, writing the Hamiltonian with uh, less operators. Mm. But it's another topic on its own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Uh, just a brief question on the last part. Like, mm -hmm. how how good is this approximation actually? Uh, I just don't have any intuition. It's uh, the most used approximation. Um, mm. uh, it's the Trotter approximation. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard about it. Uh, heard uh, about it, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, here. I just explained the first order structure, the uh, higher order, but uh, it scales as uh, t squared. So nothing prevents us to say, okay, I apply this thing with t over r and I apply it r times. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the error scales as. Uh, t squared over r squared and then mm. times r because I'm applying r times. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's okay. Uh, In I some mean, sense, you can that, choose sort of like the, the approximation the that, that you want. Yeah. In general, the uh, short answer is uh, it's a very good approximation. Mm -hmm. Also because this bound uh, is a very uh, loose bound. And uh, there are ways to improve it, uh, like uh, simulating uh, short times uh, at a time, uh, many times. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. In, so maybe in the paper also we provide uh, another way to uh, implement this operator without doing this approximation, but it's more complicated. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so maybe uh, like just give some people chance to ask a question mm -hmm. or yeah. I can yeah ask sure. some further questions mm, sure sure I'm curious about uh, things you approximate the bosonic mode into the zero and one uh, approximation and I think is there any generalization of this formalism like you can extend your two-dimensional bosonic state into d-dimensional states and I think the logical the z operator and x operator will become heisenberg well operators and is there a error correction code in this d-dimensional bosonic state um so um good question um we are working on it um there are people working with uh, qubits on links, uh, right? And qubits on size. Um, we are trying to do a correction with it. Uh, we have some problems, but um, are minor problems. The answer is uh, there are uh, generalizations. The approximation of doing uh, from zero to n instead of zero to infinity levels on the bosonic modes is uh, good in a sense that uh, anyway you want to simulate uh, uh, low energy uh, systems, which means that uh, you won't create uh, many, many bosonic modes because uh, higher number, higher energies. And uh, somewhere there is the proof uh, that they decay exponentially. Mm. So, um, truncating uh, up to n instead of uh, 2n is a, yeah, whatever exponential expression. Um,
you can do a correction, yes. Um, what was the question? Uh, did I answer? Mm, you say my questions? So, um, can you repeat the yeah, question? Yeah, I think uh, like what exactly were you asking? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm asking, is there any generalization of this formalism into a d-dimensional bosonic mode uh, instead of the okay. two-dimensional? Mm -hmm. As formalism, uh, the idea is uh, easily generalizable. The formalism is uh, uh, hard to generalize. Uh, we are trying to do it. I am trying to do it. Um, the problem is that uh, the stabilizers are, by definition, a subgroup of the Pauli group. And uh, once uh, you introduce uh, uh, um, Hilbert spaces of different dimensions for sites and links. Uh, then the Gauss law is a mixed uh, uh, operator of uh, qubits uh, and qubits, or uh, mm -hmm. two-dimensional and d-dimensional systems. And mm -hmm. so it's uh, no longer in uh, uh, none of the two poly groups. And so okay. the formalism breaks uh, due to that. There are ways around it. Okay, uh, I see. Just a naive sort of thing. Could you just make everything qubit? Does that help? Yes, but uh, you are not correcting. Uh, um, now the X operator is uh, a cyclic operator. Ah. Oh. And uh, you are not correcting uh, operations that would bring the site uh, to levels above one. Mm. So, um, okay, okay, yeah, at least I can yeah, imagine I that. The you can do it. it. Uh, there are problems. Yeah. Uh, you can anyway add some redundancy and uh, add the symmetries. Okay. Without doing that, uh, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm not really understand what is the error correcting property and the uh, links between the uh, uh, how we do the content simulation in the lattice gauge theory. The connection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I, um, I yeah. Let's say that once uh, you introduce uh, an error correcting code, uh, as I was saying before, um, say you want to do uh, a, a T gate. It's uh, usually taken an example because of the, it's the first half gate to do. Um, yes. Once uh, you're are correcting uh, something and you want to apply a Z rotation. If it's not uh, a Z gate or a trigger rotation, how do you know if uh, what you applied is uh, really what you wanted to apply or is it some error? Okay, okay, I see. So one, uh, this is the problem and the solution is that uh, once uh, you do an error correcting code, People also want uh, an implementation of, uh, for example, the T gate. How do you do it uh, on your code? To do quantum simulations, you, know, you need uh, uh, arbitrary rotations, right? You need uh, this kind of rotations. Yes. And since uh, it's hard to do it uh, on our system, we did uh, this uh, circuit uh, to prove that uh, it's not really needed to do it on our system. You can do it on an ancilla, mm. which has uh, its own error correcting code uh, from literature or whatever. And on our system, we can just apply a controlled uh, logical operation, so a controlled polymetric. Okay. So this was to say that uh, okay, it's hard to do to implement these kind of operators. You can do it. Mm. Okay, I see. Right, so is there anything else? Uh, because otherwise, uh, I guess we can end here.